This morning we are blessed to hear two stories of healing in the life of Jesus. Both of our readings for today, all three of them actually, look at the restoration of God's people. People who are wandering in the desert, who are living in the oppression of other rulers and conquerors, people who are bound by their demons and bound by their illnesses, are all released and restored. If we think about it, and if we're really honest with ourselves, we too can name the demons that are in our lives. Maybe our ears are stopped up. Maybe our ears can't hear the cries of the poor. Maybe our ears can't hear the longing of those who struggle to make ends meet. Maybe our ears don't hear the needs of others in our lives. Maybe our eyes are blind. Maybe our eyes are blind to the injustice of the world. Maybe our eyes are blind to what we see happening around us. Maybe our eyes are blind to see the hurting and the poor struggling to make ends meet. Maybe our limbs are broken. Maybe our limbs don't carry us out into the world to be bearers of God's good news. Maybe our limbs have stopped working Therefore, we can't extend the arm of grace to give the love and the compassion that we have felt. Maybe our speech, maybe our speech is broken. Maybe our tongue doesn't work. And therefore, we can't proclaim with the full boldness of the gospel the power of God at work in our lives and in the lives of others. For we too long for restoration. We too are in need of the healing that Jesus brings to the Seraphonician woman, to the blind man. We too are in need of the restoration that the Lord God gives to the people of Israel as they wandered in the wilderness. You heard the word of good news from the Lord. Be strong. Have no fear. This is the Lord speaking to the people of Israel as they have struggled against the enemies of their time, as they have struggled through their journey through the wilderness, as they have struggled in the dryness of the desert, as they have struggled. They've lost their way. They're not sure what it is to be faithful. And so they long for a word from the Lord. And the Lord speaks through the prophet Isaiah. Be strong. Have no fear. Those are words of hope and peace to us in the midst of our own struggles. To know that the Lord has the power to reverse all that is hurting and broken. Jesus is encountered by this Seraphonician woman. He's hidden away in a house. And yet this woman approaches him. Now this woman has three strikes against her right from the very beginning. First, it's her gender. Women were not to approach men who were not their husbands. Women were not to speak to men unless they were their husband or their sons. And yet this woman comes to Jesus and pleads for her daughter. This woman was a Seraphonician, an alien in the land. This woman was not from the house of Israel, was not part of the inner circle of Jesus and his people. She was an outsider. She was a Gentile. She didn't share the faith of the Israelites. Three strikes against her. And yet she gathers the courage and the strength that she needs to come before Jesus and to plead for her daughter, Sir, make my daughter well. Heal my daughter. She may not have understood the power of Jesus. She may have only heard that he was a healer. Maybe she saw it for herself. 
but she didn't have the understanding of others. And yet she goes to him seeking what she believes he can provide that no one else has been able to provide. Now Jesus, you might not like Jesus very much in this passage because he rebukes her. He says, woman, woman, must feed, I must feed the children before the crumbs can be given to the dogs. She's called a dog. She's referred to as a dog. Now, we might want to rush and redeem Jesus and say, oh, you know, he was just having a really bad day. He didn't mean to speak so harshly to her. He was just having a bad day. He, he, he didn't quite understand her need. You know, but look, he changes his mind. We can be very quick to put Jesus in the best possible light here. But I'm not sure that gives us the punch that we need. For Jesus is clearly, clearly telling this woman to go away. Get behind me, woman. My food is for the children first. And he is speaking of the children of Israel, of his brethren, of his brothers and sisters in their shared faith. I have come to them first. And the woman speaks back. This is the punch. This is the best part. And we have to see Jesus' harsh words for what they are written there in Scripture for us so that we can better understand the response the woman makes back. For she says, Sir, even the dogs get to eat the crumbs from the table. Even the dogs get to eat the crumbs. She's saying to Jesus, I know I'm an outsider. I know I'm not part here. I know I'm not welcome here. I know I'm not supposed to be speaking to you. But hear my courage. See my faith. Share with my child just a crumb of your healing power. I'm not asking for it all. Just a crumb. Just a speck. That's all it's going to take to heal my daughter. And so Jesus speaks words of hope to her and says, because you have said that, your daughter is well. Go. Your daughter has been set free from her demon. Powerful experience with the Lord. For it seems that every time in the Gospel of Mark that Jesus is encountered by a woman, the ministry of Jesus takes its turn. And here in the first, in the seventh chapter of Mark, we see Jesus' ministry beginning to reach towards the Gentiles as Jesus responds to this woman who pleads on behalf of her daughter. Now in the next story of healing, we have friends who bring the blind man, and the man whose, whose tongue doesn't work. He's speechless, he's mute. And so they bring before Jesus this man, and they plead on behalf of the man for the man to be healed. And Jesus does just that, opening the eyes and releasing the tongue. We too receive the healing that God gives to us. It's a healing that shakes us free, lets us free from all the bondage that binds us together. It, it restores us back into community. It restores us into the fellowship with God and God's people. We too have received this same healing, this same compassion and mercy through our Lord and Savior Jesus. And so the question becomes for us, as it was for the folks in the James's community, what do we do with this healing? What do we do with it? How do we live with this healing in our lives? Our lives of faith are not about what we believe up here. It's not about the head knowledge. Our lives of faith are not so much about what we believe in our hearts. For we can sit in the comfortable places of our lives and say, yes, I believe in Jesus. But then not live it 
out in the world. We can say, yes, I can quote all the Ten Commandments. I know all the names of the books of the Bible. See how good I am. But not live it. Not put it to work in our lives and in the lives of others. You see, that's what James is calling us to do. James is reminding his community and us that we have been restored, that our demons are no more, that our eyes can see, our ears can hear, our tongues can speak, our limbs can go and do and be, that we are the witnesses to God's good grace and God's love for the world. And James calls us then not to be hearers of the word but to be doers of the word. We have been set free for a purpose. Our purpose is not to feel good about ourselves. Our purpose is to use the gifts that God has given us to see the needs of others, to hear the cries of the world, to speak the good news of God's love, to go with open hands and with moving feet out into the places where people need to hear and know the goodness of God. You see, we have been restored and we have been sent. Sent to go through the doors to be bearers and proclaimers of that good news of God, that compassion and mercy that we have. My sisters and brothers, may we be compelled to open our eyes to the needs of others, to open our ears to the cries of the world, to open our hands to move our feet, to go forth as bearers of that love, whether that be in our homes, in our workplaces, with the stranger wherever we may be. May that compassion that we have received flow from us out into a world that needs to be embraced by that same compassion.